Good morning, fifth grade. It sounds like uh, some of you had a little bit of trouble with your work these past couple days. Um, it wasn't just one of you, it was a lot of you. So uh, once again, I want you to know that if you ever need me to help you, um, you can have your parents uh, ask me to meet with you over Zoom uh, by yourselves or in small groups. Um, I've done it before with other classes, so I don't feel like you can't do that. I'd be glad to do that. And uh, remember also, um, I wrote it down before, but I'm going to write it down again because I'm telling you, I use it all the time. I use it with my kids. I had to use it with um, one of my sons. They both take algebra and I had to use it with uh, them yesterday with plotting graphs. So, um, don't be afraid. Okay, Khan, is it all in there? Khanacademy.com or Khan Academy, the app. All you have to do is search what it is that you're trying to figure out how to do and it'll explain it and then give you some problems to uh, make sure that you understand. So don't be afraid to use it, it's a tool. So, but you can use me or you can use Khan Academy or um, any of the other um, search you can search to so anyway have you ever heard someone say that kid that person man woman girl she is smart but she has no common sense have you heard that before well that's kind of what we're going to be talking about today in your lesson. Today's is a problem solving strategy lesson. And so remember that's taking what we've learned and actually applying it. So our problem solving strategy for today is using logical reasoning. So I know when I'm trying to figure something out, like how to reason something out, I usually make some kind of a list or a chart or a picture or a graph so I can see it and I can figure it out. Um, you got at the beginning of this whole Zoom thing, you got a chart saying, okay, this class is at this time, this class is at this time. And I'm telling you, the high school principal and Ms. Gaudette and all the teachers sat around and figured out, okay, who's gonna fit here, who's gonna fit there, and they just had to figure it out and reason it out logically so that people weren't trying to take two classes at the same time. It was just a logical reasoning. So let's see how to figure things out logically using charts or graphs or lists um, in math. All right, so let's look at the top of page 434. Page 434, it says, reading helps. Drawing conclusions. Okay, drawing a conclusion doesn't mean drawing a conclusion. It means Drawing a conclusion is taking all of the information that you know and coming up with an answer and assuming something. Now, it might not end up being exactly the right answer, but it'll head you in the right direction. Okay, so how do you use the logical reasoning strategy? Well, let's look at this problem and it'll help us figure it out. Volunteer work. 
Barry, Brenda, Bert, and Babette each volunteered for a different job. The jobs were clothes donations, can recycling, newspaper recycling, and food donations. Neither girl volunteered for newspapers. What did Brenda and Barry do when Bert worked at can recycling and Babette was at the clothes donations? Okay, so there's a few things that we know. We know who the four people are. We know what all the jobs were. We also know that neither girl volunteered for newspapers. And we know that Bert worked at can recycling and Babette was at the clothes donations. Okay, so you could probably figure that out in your head if you really, if you really thought about it. But the best way to logically reason that out is to write it down and then eliminate and assign based on the information that you know. Okay, so what do you know? You know that four students, look under read and understand. You know that four students each worked at different jobs. You know the students' names and jobs. What are you trying to find out? you're trying to find out which job each student had. Okay, so what strategy will you use? So the strategy is to use logical reasoning. Take what you know to figure out what you don't know, okay? So right here, we're going to make a chart. So look at the chart underneath. It says how to make a chart, how to make a chart. Right there. All right. How to make a chart. Make a chart with the needed labels. Okay. So we know the kids' names and we know the jobs. Okay. So we can put the kids' names on the side, the jobs across the top, and then we can figure out well, we, whose do we know what they have and who do we not know, and then figure out based on what we know who did what, okay? All right, so step two, fill in the chart with the information given. Step three, use what you are given and reasoning to make conclusions. Okay, so we know, look under Barry, Brenda, Burt, and Babette. We know that Babette was doing clothes donations because it said it in the problem. Okay, so we put yes, yes, that Babette was doing clothes donations. Okay, or you could put a check mark. Um, and then we also know, so you could put no in all of those, in all of the other lines because nobody else was doing the same thing. We also know that Bert was doing can recycling. Okay, so Bert was doing can recycling, so you're gonna write yes under can recycling for Bert, okay? And we know that neither girl, neither girl volunteered for um, newspapers, okay? So we're gonna put a no under newspapers, newspaper recycling for Brenda, and we're gonna put a no under newspaper recycling for Babette, okay? So if, the boys, if, um, what's his name, Bert. If Bert, we know that Bert did can recycling, okay? And so we would put a no next to him for uh, newspaper recycling because he did can recycling. There's only one spot left for can recycling. So we know that Barry did, sorry, newspaper recycling. Barry did newspaper recycling. So we'll put a yes next to Barry for newspaper recycling. So now we only have one um, volunteer job left and we only have one person left, okay? So who would that person be? Well, it would be Brenda because she's the only one left. So we're gonna put a yes next to Brenda and find out, or put that 
and then put no's in the other spots. Okay. So if Brenda, look underneath, if Brenda has a no in three locations, then she has to be at food donations. Then Barry has to be at newspaper recycling. Okay. So then it says, look back and check. Is your work reasonable? Yes. I filled in the information I was given. I made the right conclusions. Okay. So reasonable, reasonable means, um, it makes sense. Um, it, Reasonable means I have reasons that it is able, okay? So when we're being reasonable, we're basing our answers on what we know and on facts and on knowledge, not just randomly guessing. Okay, so look on page 435 under talk about it. Number one. In the volunteer work program, how did you decide that Brenda was at food donation and Barry was at newspaper recycling? Well, we've kind of already talked through this, but using logical reasoning, Brenda had to be at food donations because she was not at any of the other locations. Since Brenda was at food donations, the only possibility left for Barry was newspaper recycling, especially because Barry was a boy and no girls were at newspaper recycling. Number two, when a yes is placed in a particular cell, the little box is called a cell, um, that's why in Microsoft Office, the charts, the uh, graph, uh, you know what I'm saying, um, it's called Excel because it's all different cells, the boxes are called cells. Okay, when a yes is placed in a particular cell, what gets placed in the other cells in that row and in that column? So if a yes gets placed in one cell, what's gonna get placed in the other ones? What's the opposite of yes? No, okay. Each person can only do one job at a time, okay? Because that's what it said in the, in the problem, okay? Number three. Why does using a chart make it easier to use logical reasoning? Okay, so the chart is just a way to organize the information. Okay, you could try to remember it all in your head and you might get it right. But the more information that you have, um, the harder it gets to keep it straight in your head. So it's important to put it down. Okay, like I said at the beginning about common sense, um, we can say, oh, I could figure that out. And you might be able to because you're really smart. But common sense would tell you it's worth writing down. Okay, it's worth writing down so you can figure it out so it doesn't get messed up. Okay, I had a teacher in high school that used to always say, I'm pretty sure he wasn't the one that first said it, but he used to always say anything worth remembering is worth writing down okay and it's so much easier to explain to somebody how to do it if you write it down or how you got to a certain sorry, answer if you write it down okay so let's look on 435 where it says when might you use the logical reasoning strategy so when would you we have a lots of different problem solving strategies when would you use this one so it's uh let's look under musical instruments nancy martha steve and randy each play a different instrument the instruments they play not necessarily in this order are trumpet flute clarinet and trombone randy is playing the trumpet and Martha is not playing the tr trombone. If Steve is playing the clarinet, what instrument is each playing? Okay, so they told us what two people are playing, and they told us what one person is not playing, and then the last person, they didn't tell us anything about it, okay? So this is basically the process of elimination. So you're eliminating what you know to find out what you don't know. Okay, think about when to use logical reasoning. Think about using logical reasoning when 
you are get, given seven, several people or categories that are matched using given rules, and you can use known facts to reason, not reason out unknown facts, okay? So you can use logical reasoning when you've been given a list of um, people or objects and categories that are matched give, using given rules. And then also when you have known facts, but then you also have unknown facts and you can figure it out using a chart or a list or reasoning it out so that you can come to your answer, okay? So number four, what facts were you given in the problem that could be filled in on the chart to start? Okay, you know that Randy is playing the trumpet and Steve is playing the clarinet and Martha is not playing the trombone. Okay, so when you figure it all out, look at the chart above, you know that Randy is playing the trumpet, Martha is playing the flute, Steve is playing the clarinet, and Nancy is playing the trombone. Okay, number five, how did you know that Nancy played the trombone? Well, Nancy is playing either the flute or the trombone. Since Martha is playing the flute, Nancy must be playing the trombone. So you just logically reason it out. All right, so you're going to, for tonight's homework, or today's homework, you're going to do um, 436, practice A, odd, 436 practice A odd. So that means you're only doing number three and number five. Okay. Uh, it's not that much, but there's a reason for that. And that's because tomorrow or this afternoon, if you want to get started, tomorrow you have an open book test. Okay. I know this is the first test that you're taking um, that we have not been at school and that I am not physically there to walk you through uh, the problems if you need help. So if you do end up needing help, please have your parents reach out to me and I can help you. Uh, but let's look at, let's take a look at it um, just so we can talk about how uh, we're going to do it, okay? Okay, there are a few um, review, there are a few review pages before the test, uh, page 444 and 445 is key vocabulary and concept review. So it goes over again, what we've been talking about and uh, basically what we've been learning to, to get you uh, familiar again or help you remember. And then on page 442 and 443, there's chapter seven, test talk, okay? And it has test taking strategies. And um, on page 443, numbers, uh, 442 and 443, numbers one, two, three, and four, if you actually do those, um, on paper, uh, on your test and figure those out, I will give you extra credit. Okay. I feel like time is crazy and maybe you need a little bit of extra credit on your test. Okay. So 442 and 443, if you do those, they are multiple choice. Uh, I will give you extra credit for them. So uh, five points extra credit. So that's a bonus because there's only four questions. So five points of extra credit if you decide to do 442 and 443, okay? Um, 440 and 441 also have a review and diagnostic checkpoint. So I want you to go over those before you decide to dive into the test, just so that you're, you remember um, everything that we've talked about, okay? All right, so page 446 and 447, quickly, 
the first page of your test, and remember this is an open book test, you can go back and look, uh, you can go on con, you can um, look back at how to do it. All right, uh, please do not look up the answers on the computer, that would be cheating, okay? But you may use your book and you may look up how to do something, you may not look up the answer to a particular problem. Okay, so multiple choice for the first page. Um, choose the correct letter for each answer. Number one, which fraction names the shaded parts of the figure below? Remember, uh, when we have fractions, the numerator um, is the part and the denominator is the whole. So if you have eight pieces, that's going to be the denominator, and let's say three of them are shaded in, you would have three eighths, okay? So three out of the eight are shaded in. Okay, number two, which fraction equals uh, 0.3? Remember, three is in the tenths place, so you would read that three tenths, so circle the one that is three tenths. Which mixed number equals 15 over 6. So remember we take the numerator and divide it by the denominator and you'll get um, the whole number and however many are left over is what goes on in the numerator for the mixed number. Okay, for instance, if I had um, 12 over 5. Okay, what is 12 divided by 5? Whoa, I just lost a heart. 12 divided by 5 is 2 with how many left over? 2. Okay, so 2 12 fifths equals 2 and 2 fifths. Ready? Okay. Um, number four, what fraction names the shaded part of this set? Same thing. Uh, number five, which number represents point A on the number line? So it's a number between one and two, okay? Because one is at the beginning of the number line, two is at the end. So it's going to be a mixed number. It's going to be one and, and then whatever the, count how many lines there are, that would be the denominator. And then which line? letter A is, and that would be the numerator. Number six, which fraction is not in its simplest form? Remember, if it's in its simplest form, it cannot be divided, the top and bottom cannot be divided anymore by the greatest common factor. Number seven, which is the most reasonable estimate for the part of this figure that is shaded? Okay. Number eight, which equals two sevenths? Two over seven, two divided by seven. Okay, number nine, if three seventeenths equals six over blank, because remember you have to do the same thing to the top as you do to the bottom, then blank equals. Number 10, the diameter of three buttons are um, 25 hundredths of an inch, three eighths of an inch, and five sixteenths of an inch, which shows these diameters ordered from least to greatest. Okay, so you have to figure out what, um, which one's the smallest and which one is the biggest. Okay, number 11, what is the greatest common factor of 18 and 63? So you need to find all the factors of 18, all the factors of 63, and which one matches, the, the greatest one that matches. Number 12, which statement is true? Number 13, in, this, in his aquarium, Mike has three angelfish and three nine goldfish. What fraction of the total fish are angelfish? So make sure you add the fish together before you do this problem. All right, free response. Write each mixed number as an improper fraction. Okay, remember when we're doing a mixed number and turning it into an uh, um, improper fraction, I'm gonna do two and one third, okay? We multiply, you go three, three, you multiply the 
denominator by the whole number and then add the numerator. So three times two is six plus one is seven. So two and one third equals seven thirds. That is the improper fraction, okay? Multiply the numerator, I mean, sorry, the denominator times the whole number plus the numerator equals the improper fraction, okay? All right. Um, write each fraction or mixed number as a decimal, okay? So remember, you in order to find a decimal, out of a fraction, you have to divide the numerator by the denominator. If obviously the numerator is going to be higher, if it's a proper fraction, the numerator is going to be lower than the denominator. So you need to write a decimal point and add zeros before you divide. And don't forget to put a decimal point in the quotient. Um, write greater than, less than, or equals for each problem. Write the location of each point as a decimal and a fraction or mixed number in its simplest form. Okay, so reduce down. Number 24, use the chart and logical reasoning to solve the problem. We just did that today. Writing in math, number 25, write a decimal and a fraction in simplest form for the shaded, for the shaded portion above. And then explain, okay? Number 26, decide if the swimming problem has extra or missing information. Explain, then solve it if there's enough information. Swimming in a 50 meter pool, Kelly swam 1.3 kilometers and Cindy swam 1.35 kilometers. Who swam farther? And number 27, explain how to write six over 30 in its simplest form, okay? So remember, find the greatest common factor first, okay? And then you have to do the same thing to the top as you do to the bottom. All right, I will see you in a minute.